Oh, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I first want to tell you why I chose this topic. And I chose it because I'm interested in women that are from history. Um, I like to read nonfiction, uh, biographies, those kinds of things. <clears throat> and the royals are one of them that uh, I've been accused of spending too much time with dead people. <laughs> Also, Tony, I want you to think about this. I chose this because these women lived, were born and lived the same time as our own Elizabeth Beardsley. So in my thinking, did she meet them possibly? We don't know, but she could have because they were travelers. So um, that's another reason I chose this. And maybe you've daydreamed about being a princess in another life like I had. And then I thought really hard and thought, no, I don't think I'd be a princess. <laughs> so a couple things about Albert and Elizabeth. Uh, and keep these in mind as I go through each of the daughters. Uh, Victoria's imperfections as a mother are going to show up in her daughters. Uh, she had no natural a connection with her children uh, and she often called uh, infants frogs <laughs> and she was jealous of Albert's time that he spent with the children which to me presents her with uh, a childish temperament well she was a child she was so young when she was married and started having children uh, the time she started having children until her last one was 17 years. So that's a long time. <clears throat> Quick. Here they all are in their beautiful dresses. And I wanted to mention that it just seems strange to me that being it's the Victorian age that their dresses were off their shoulders. Well, that, all, that only happened when they were in uh, being presented uh, somewhere in the evening where there was a lot of people. They were allowed to wear their dresses like that. And to me, I think it also shows that during that time that they were being presented to men. And so they were looking for a husband. <clears throat> the first one we're going to talk about is Victoria who's Princess Royal. I'm going to call her Princess Royal. I'm not going to call her Victoria because you get really mixed up because there's a lot of Victorias in this family. So she's, she's going to be our first one we're talking about. <clears throat> she was the first child of Albert and Elizabeth, and uh, she was self-assured, confident, a perfect pupil. She excelled in everything that she did. And her biography says that she had a core of steel. And uh, it also said she learned French at 18 months. And at four years, she could speak Spanish. So this must have been a really intelligent uh, young woman. <clears throat> Albert and Elizabeth said she was a perfect child. Victoria? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We, we forgive you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. You see Albert and Elizabeth a lot in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Albert and Victoria called her perfect. And when their second child was born, who was Bertie, uh, he was the heir to the throne. Well, Victoria, was Princess Royal, was jealous of him. She also taunted her intelligence around him, her superiority. She made fun of him uh, and carried this out through adulthood. So this family, they have a lot of conflict going on in this family. <clears throat> uh, Princess Royal was actually presented to Frederick William I of Prussia when she was only 14, but her mother, and father had been looking for a mate for her from when she was born. <laughs> Queen Victoria spent a lot of time thinking about how, who's the best one for my daughters. Uh, he was 20 years older than her. And the reason is that Albert wanted to connect to the German country. And it wasn't called German, Germany at that time, it was Prussia. 
and he wanted to influence them with his liberal thinking and a desire to connect to, uh, to influence Germany to lean towards parliamentary rule uh, as it was in England. So there's kind of a motive uh, behind, behind this. So uh, Albert said, no, you're too young, you have to wait two years. So they waited two years and she was married at 16 in St. James Place that we hear about today at 1858. <clears throat> and they were called the most important match of the century because you could see that England was trying to connect uh, and influence uh, the Prussia area. Uh, <clears throat> Queen Victoria in her prudishness never told her daughters about the marriage bed, uh, but Albert did. Albert took on himself to talk to the girls about what takes place after you're married. So I kind of admired him for that, that he prepared them, and it upset Victoria. So um, shortly after she was married, her real true nature was presented, and she didn't like the Prussian area. She, <clears throat> they were dark, dreary, the castle was cold. Uh, she didn't have any outlets for anything to do. So most of the time she criticized the Prussian state, which really turned the people against her. In fact, her mother-in-law, who was queen at the time, censored her letters and was able to see what she was saying about the Prussian people and that caused them all to turn against her because she was being critical of them. Uh, Princess Royal had her first child that she had was uh, Wil Wilhelm, but I'm gonna call him Kaiser Wilhelm because that helps you connect to World War I. It was a difficult birth and he was injured. And so his left arm was, there was a disability with his left arm. And the Princess Royal was offended and appalled that she brought a child into the world that wasn't perfect. So it kind of gives you an idea what she's like. I think, you know, this picture to me looks like she's just uh, bored with everything. Um, her daughter Charlotte was born, and uh, she told she was concerned because she thought her hands and feet were too big. So as she grew up, Charlotte Charlotte could sense that her mother felt that way, and that made a difference in her turning away from her mother. Uh, she lost a child called Waldy, who fell from the castle window when he was six and he, he died from internal bleeding because he was a hemophiliac. So this is where you're gonna see the hemophilias showing up in the family. Uh, Fritz, which was her husband, and her really believed that they would rule together and that she would be part of the ruling. Uh, so she's, she's a really strong core of steel woman uh, so Fritz, her husband, took the throne, but he died a few short months later of <coughs> laryngeal cancer. And so Kaiser Wilhelm, he took the throne, and he rejected all of his parents' teaching, teachings about lib liberalism and parliamentary rule. He called his father a weak, cowardly man controlled by his British wife and the Jews. So, you know, you, you kind of when you hear Jews, you know what's coming later on in history. And Fritz, the king, had, had denounced anti-Semitic views. So this was a big deal, Kaiser Wilhelm rejecting his parents' uh, views. And if Fritz had lived, maybe World War I would never have happened. Just something to think about. Um, in history, we have, and in storage in the castle, Windsor Castle, are 3,777 3, letters between Queen Victoria and her daughter, Princess Royal. So a lot of the information that's put together for these biographies that people have come from those letters. 
Later in life, Princess Royal was an amateur gardener, and she actually uh, started doing uh, importing uh, English gardens into Germany. So, I'm going to move on to the. <laughs> oh, I wanted to show you this. So, this is Prussia, and here's uh, where the next princess lives. So, Princess Royal is in Prussia, and we're going to see Princess Alice is in Hesse. So, Alice was born. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to show you this. Um, <clears throat> So you can see, here's where Wilhelm II of Germany started. And they, they had a daughter, Margaret, who married Prince Frederick Charles of Hesse. And it became Finland. So I just want you to keep in mind how many countries are going to be involved with this family. The son, Waldy, fell out of the window. Okay, here's Princess Maud Mary. <clears throat> She's the third child, second daughter of Albert and Elizabeth, and she was just the opposite of her sister. She was soft-spoken, kind, compassionate for everyone. Uh, she, had, she was introspective, shy, and often was seen as a caregiver. She was also the uh, confidant of Bertie, who was going to be king someday, that his the Princess Royal treated so badly. So Alice took his side and tried to motivate him because she would tear him down. So the children are in conflict. <clears throat> Alice uh, nursed Prince Albert while he was dying. You can see a picture there on the left. Um, Albert died December 14, 1861. She nursed Queen Victoria when she became very ill and she nursed Bertie when he was on the verge of death and so they called her the house the angel house angel of the house because of uh, always taking care of people and her hero was Florence Nightingale so you can see the connection in nursing and I love what she said when her father died Queen Victoria, of course, spent the rest of her life grieving, and Alice had a different outlook. Um, she, uh, she said that he was not lost, but gone before. Gives you an idea what her attitude of life was like. She made her formal debut in 1860 and was re introduced to Louis, uh, the, he the Hessen Prince, by the Rhine. That can really get confusing, too, all the Rhine business. <laughs> he was 20 years older than her. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and he said, Alice would be a decorative ornament for me. She was married at 17. <clears throat> I think Alice's uh, thinking was ahead of her time. She was dedicating to educating women. She was involved in the administration of hospitals. And during the war with France, she actually set up beds in the garden, in the palace garden, for homeless people. Uh, she also began to talk about, <coughs> talk about gynecological things with women, which uh, the queen was absolutely devastated that her daughter would be talking about things like that. And she warned her other daughters, if Alice talks to you, don't pay any attention to her. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> she also cared for her husband and children when they uh, had diphtheria. They all had it. Uh, and when her youngest child, May, who was six, died, uh, she didn't tell the other children. And finally, the, the oldest boy said, where's my playmate, May? What's, where is she? So she told him uh, that she had died, and she grabbed him to cons console him. And she, it's called the kiss of death, because she hadn't touched anybody. She'd been caring for them, but she didn't touch them. Uh, she developed diphtheria, too, at the age of 35 and died. 
and you can actually see hospitals and things that are around England, I mean around Germany, uh, that are memorials to her, a hospital named after her. She also is the line where Prince uh, that just passed away, the Prince of Edinburgh, he comes from that line. That would be his great, great grandmother. Mm, I'm not sure that, I'm not gonna, we'll get into that when I show some things about the line and uh, the next one, excuse me, the next one to talk about is, well, I think we're gonna see a slide of her. Yeah, okay. Queen Victoria, Empress Alice, okay. I'll start with the first daughter. The first daughter uh, of Alice was Victoria by the Hess. And her daughter, Prince Alice, married Prince Andrew of Greece and Denmark. So we're dragging in some more countries, aren't we? We have Finland, now we've got Greece, now we're getting Denmark. And from that came Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, the Queen Elizabeth's consort. Her second daughter, Elizabeth, married a Russian prince, uh, and he was assassinated, and she was killed by the Bolsheviks. And we know this one quite well. The third daughter, Empress Alec of Russia, was married to the Tsar Nicholas of Russia, who the whole family was assassinated, and the son, Alexa, had hemophilia. So, Princess Margaret of Connaught, I'm not sure that's right how to pronounce it, she married Gustav uh, Adolf of Sweden, and Prince Gu Gustav's son had uh, Carl Gustav of Sweden and Princess Ingrid of Sweden, who married uh, a king of Denmark. So, and these people are, you can see them, you can Google them, they're alive, you can read about them. Okay, our next one is, am I running out of time here? Go a little faster. <laughs> Princess Helena, who was called Lechen, uh, which is a German name for bright and beautiful, and she was born in 1846. Uh, her biographers call her clever, plump, dowdy, a placid temperament and an authoritarian spirit and very loyal. But Queen Victoria described her by saying that she was a robust girl, and this just really touched me, who is remarkably unremarkable. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's got a problem, doesn't she? <laughs> Uh, Helena once wished that she had been a boy because she was very interested in mechanical things and uh, she became attached to Albert's librarian at a really young age and so Queen Victoria uh, disposed of him because he wasn't the kind of man we were looking for for her daughter. Uh, she married Prince Christian of Schleswig of Holstein, which became later Denmark, and he was 15 years older than her. <laughs> um, Queen Victoria said, yes, you can marry him if you live by me. So she actually uh, bought a place for them to live so that she could be close to her. Uh, she was dependent on Helena. Uh, and she was, she was a crutch for uh, her mother. She was active in the Red Cross, School of Needlework, work, <coughs> Workhouse infirmator, Infirmary and Nursing Association. When her health was failing, she became addicted to opium and laudanum, and I saw several books that that is true. Uh, and she actually traveled to Germany to see an occultist. She's kind of an interesting character. Um, <clears throat> Prince, Princess Alexandra married to the Prince of Wales. Princess Alexandra is from Germany. 
and she's married to the Prince of Wales, and she's will not, she doesn't invite her sister-in-laws, Alice or Helena, because they aren't royal enough. Uh, Queen Victoria, oh, Princess uh, Alex, oh, I said that. Uh, she devoted a lot of time to nursing, and she campaigned for women's rights. Yeah. <laughs> Queen Victoria hated that. <laughs> uh, and this, I, I saw some pictures of this. She actually, in later life, got into acting, and they actually have a picture of her on the stage. She also liked to dance, uh, and uh, she was apathetic to tea parties. Sorry, Joy. <laughs> She remained devoted to her mother, uh, and she died in 1923 at the age of 77. Okay, Princess Louise Caroline Alberta was born in 1848. She was strikingly beautiful, sharp-tongued, rebellious. Uh, she was emotional with highs and lows, uh, and so she was different than her sisters. She wanted to have an independent life. Uh, she wanted to experience what it was like to live with her mother's uh, subjects. So, and I can't believe this, but Queen Victoria allowed her to go to art school because she was really interested in art. In fact, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert were quite uh, good artists. So she allowed her to go uh, to art school and her uh, area was sculpting. And I, I think you can see this bust of Queen Victoria by, by her daughter. She also rubbed shoulders with quite a few famous names uh, in the sculpting world. Uh, her mother and her toured Scotland together. And unbeknownst to, to uh, Louise, she had set up a meeting with the Sp Scottish Campbell family and she wanted her to marry John Campbell, the ninth Duke of Argyle, um, and stay close to her. So she did, she married the ninth Duke of Argyle. I don't think that he was as many years older than her. And Queen Victoria actually gave him a flat in the Kensin Kensington Palace. The Louis, uh, Louise was never able to conceive. Uh, could not have children, and the marriage had problems. They spent a lot of time separated from each other until uh, he was appointed to the governor of Canada. So Louise went with him, and she missed her family and, uh, and England so much that she went back to England. But if you go to Banff, Canada, which I have been there, you can see Lake Louise, and for a long time I carried that picture around with me. It's a beautiful place. Alberta, Canada is married after Prince Albert. Louise wrote a memoir about her sister Alice, and I've been trying to find it because I would like to read it. She helped organize schools for women, and by the end of the century, 32 schools for women were started, and all that time, Louise received threats from men who opposed educating women. Uh, <clears throat> Lorne, who was called the Duke, uh, the Earl of Argyle, refused to allow Louise to speak in front of her causes. He would read her speeches aloud while she watched, which, you know, at that time probably was pretty common. And Louise continued her interest in art clear to the end of her life, which she died in, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have her death date. Okay. Oh, I do? Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, I asked Mark how to pronounce it because... I, <laughs> Beatrice, yes, because my family pronounced it different. Um, so Beatrice <clears throat> was born in 1848. I'm sorry, wrong one. 
She was born in on April 14th, 1857. And her name is Prince Beatrice Mary Victoria Theodore. She was the ninth child and fifth daughter. <clears throat> uh, she was <clears throat> born in Scotland and the only child that was born in Scotland. She was unselfish and Queen Victoria called her perfect. She was sheltered, naive, and had a calm temperament. <clears throat> she stood in the sh shadow of her siblings and this is funny. Queen Victoria saw herself as a church, and Beatrice was the nun to serve the church. <laughs> After Albert died, the queen obsessed at keeping Beatrice near to her, and she was only four years old, and being dependent on a four-year-old. Uh, Beatrice grew up having very little life outside of the palace. Uh, Beatrice married Prince Henry of Battenberg, good-looking guy, he cut his mustache, though. <laughs> uh, and she was the only daughter that got to wear her mother's veil. She was the only one. <clears throat> of course, Princess Royal, the first daughter, was critical of the marriage as she said that it lacked royalty. So she never invited him to the palace. Uh, the devotion that Beatrice had to her mother grew over the years. And you can read some of that in the Queen's journals and letters. Uh, Beatrice's son, Leopold, was also a hemophiliac and died during hip surgery. Beatrice's daughter, Victoria Eugenia, married the King Alfonso of Spain, and their child, Gonzalo, was a hemophiliac. So it's moving through the family. The king, King Alfonso of Spain at that time, distanced himself from his wife, and he never spoke to Princess Beatrice again, although he did allow her to be grandma to the children. After World War II, they changed their name <clears throat> from Battenberg to Mount Batten. We've all heard that one, too. <laughs> and her husband died, I don't have the date, but quite young in his life, uh, malaria. In, he went to Africa in, uh, during the war over there. So Beatrice spent the last 30 years of her life editing the Queen Victoria's journals. Queen Victoria had 111 of them. Uh, and biographers and history criticizes her for removing parts and the materials that might be hurtful to other people. So her journals were shortened by one third of what they could have been. And the journals are in the archives at Windsor Castle. You think you can see them, Joy, when you go? <laughs> I'll ask. Yeah. So she outlived her, si her siblings, and she died in 1944 at Osborne Cottage at the age of 87. Okay, this is an, another slide just showing you the connections. Queen Victoria, Princess Beatrice, her daughter Eugenia married uh, the King of Spain, and her son Louis Mountbatten uh, was the last viceroy of India and was assassinating assassinated and the son had hemophilia. So I just wanted to point out because this is so interesting. I always see these people going to weddings and they're all there. The, fin the Finnish people, the Swedish people. I'm like, why is that? Well, it's because if you start reading, they're all connected to Queen Victoria. <laughs> she was called the grandmother of Europe uh, through her daughters. So that's the have any questions? Oh, I knew you would. You said that Prince Philip was through Alice. Who was Elizabeth through? Queen Elizabeth. Queen uh, Elizabeth. She was one of the granddaughters, like great granddaughters of Victoria. She's on the other side. Okay. This is, okay, if I could. Uh huh. Yeah, she come. Yeah, she comes through Birdie. I figured it was one of the 
Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Bertie's son, and then his son, and then another son, there's Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. so. so, yeah, they were related. Yeah, they were related. I think they're like second cousins. Is that what Prince Philip and Elizabeth were? I'm not sure if it's second or third. So. Did Victoria just have one son, just Bertie? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, she had more. She had more? Yeah. Well, there were, what, nine children, so four of them were males. Mm -hmm. And she also had some that died in infancy. I have a couple books uh, to recommend to you. I read this one. This is Last Princess, by, and it's about Beatrice, how devoted she was to the queen. It's by Matthew Dennison in 1999 and you can get it at the library this is very overdue i have to take it back today <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can also you can't get the book but you can listen uh, online at the elkhart public library to victoria's daughters and this is the one that i gleaned most of my information from by gerald packard and it was written in 1999 as well. So. Carolyn, I kind of brought out or was brought out during the um, show here that Bernie was allowed to be commissioned, that he was never reprimanded, he was never disciplined, he was out of control. Well, um, do they ever talk about that? A little bit, yeah. Bertie was. Princess Royal had a lot to do with the way that Bertie felt about himself. Uh, and that, you know, when children don't feel good about themselves, they're going to act out, you know. So possibly that, I've heard that before about him, uh, that he was kind of favored in a way. Right, because he was destined for the Yeah, yeah, he had more, uh, more opportunity to do things than the rest of them. So, and so does Princess Royal. I mean. Was Princess Royal the oldest? Yes, yes, she is, yeah. So, do you ever think of yourself in another life? You'd been a princess? <laughs> yeah. Didn't they change the rule in, in England now that if the first child is a daughter, yeah. then she could become queen? Yes. Okay, so that would Yes. <laughs> so, that's... I the right thing by having a man. Okay. I'm well, done.